Hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Hope you're having a fantastic day, um, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time of the day it is you're watching this. Alright, uh, we're going to be moving back to macroeconomics in this video. Looking at part 8A, key okay, on economic growth, okay, we're going to be focusing on, um, in this first part, okay, this is a two-part series, right? This first part, I'm going to be looking at what actual and potential growth is, okay, so the definitions of what actual and potential growth is. Um, in the next part, I'll be looking at the causes of economic growth, as well as the consequences, okay, that economic growth actually brings about. All right, so this um, is going to be a two-part series, so I reckon you, stand in, you, stay, you stay for both, okay, because um, they, do, they do link up together, okay, you cannot do without one or the other, all right? You need to know both, right? So in the previous few videos, I've really gone through the basics of what ADAS is. I've gone through multiplier effect, GDP versus GNI and standard of living. So economic growth is kind of like something that ties everything together, okay? And then later on, we will look at um, inflation, key price stability, um, your unemployment, okay, as well as your balance of payments, okay? So those are basically, uh, these four, okay, are basically the main, um, the main four macroeconomic objectives that every government has. Alright, so let's just jump right in into this part. It's going to be a fun part, alright? It's actually a lot of graph drawings. Um, and it's quite simple to understand, right? So, what is the definition of economic growth? Okay, first and foremost, okay, economic growth refers to um, an increase in real output as measured by the change in real GDP from one time period to another, okay? So, you notice that on your ADAS diagram, right? As long as you see a change in your real GDP, be it an increase or a decrease, K okay, usually that means that there's a change in your national income. Okay, your real GDP, right? So it's a change in national income means that there was a change in your national output. Okay, so this could mean that there is either um, negative growth, positive growth, or either that growth is slowing or growth is rising rapidly, right? So we'll see later on, okay, what, what this looks like in a diagram form. So it is measured by real GDP growth, okay, not looking at GPL, okay? Later on, you will understand that GPL um, tends to refer to inflation, okay, price stability. So for real GDP, um, it usually links to economic growth, okay, and an increase in Y on the diagram. So there are four types of growth, actual growth, potential growth, sustainable growth, and inclusive growth, okay? Increasingly, most societies are moving towards sustainable growth, of course, right? Because of the care for the environment, okay? But actual growth basically means the short-run economic growth. So every time we look at actual, okay, we're looking at a short-term rise in your national output. Okay, potential growth, we're looking at long-run economic growth. So it's the potential of an economy. So in this case, we look at things like productive capacity, things like level of technology within a country. Okay, those are what will determine whether the country is facing potential growth or not. Okay, then sustainable growth, of course, of course is to grow the economy, okay, um, in terms of your um, economy, okay, while ensuring that your environmental sustainability is being met as well as social sustainability. Inclusive growth looks at more at more an equity level, okay, You're ensuring that um, every single person in society has a job. Or at least has a part to play in, in, in having an increase in the overall income. Okay, then we'll look at we'll look more specifically on each one of them. Okay, let's go through e actual growth first, actual economic growth first. So actual growth okay, refers to a short run increase in national output as a result of increased utilization of present capacity. So we're looking at current levels of your um, labor, land, entrepreneurship, as well as your capital. Okay, an increase in any of these four um, factors of production, okay, which causes a rise in national output, which show that there is short run economic growth. So this results in a movement from inside of the PPC to a point on the curve. So for those of you guys who forgot how your PPC looks like, okay, go and um, look back here. Okay, I've covered it before in my first ever video on economics, right? I think it was the one on scarcity. Okay, um, it looks something like this. Okay, your PPC. So essentially it is um, basically a movement from inside onto the to a point on the curve, okay, the PPC curve, right? So go and find out more in that video, okay, I'll, I will maybe link it in the top corner of the screen or in the description below. Okay, then, um, actual growth, okay, if you look at actual growth, okay, it's usually caused by an increase in AD, okay, due to an increase in CIGX minus M in the short run, okay, so we're not looking at an increase in AS, we're looking at a short run increase in your aggregate demand, okay, I've gone through AD is as well, go check it out. So, however, the only thing is that you need to be mindful, okay, is that if AD rises beyond a certain output, Okay, let's say if it's near or at full employment, it actually creates inflationary pressure, okay, because of a rise in your GPL. So a rise in GPL, we'll learn later on, that actually causes um, inflation within a country, which is definitely not beneficial. Okay, this is usually because all resources, okay, is at full employment, okay, is all being used within an economy. Alright, so let's look at a diagram. So this is how a diagram looks like, okay, when I have got short run economic growth, okay, actual growth. Okay, it's when it's very, it's actually very simple, okay, it's just simply when there's a rise in AD, below full employment. Okay, so we're not looking at a case whereby we are um, um, at full employment or we are nearing full employment because that will cause a greater rise in your price levels which is 
going to cause inflation. Okay, we're looking more at when um, it is below full employment and hence it results in this increase in your national output. Right, so this is an increase in your national output from Y1 to Y2 as you can see over here. Uh, which is basically largely caused due to a rise in AD from AD1 to AD2. Okay, this could be due to a rise in CIG or either that a rise in your net exports. Okay, this will cause this and hence causing your economic growth to actually um, occur in the short run. Right, potential growth, like I've said before, is the long-run economic growth of a country or of an economy. So a rise in an e uh, economy's potential output. Okay, it's a potential output. So that means this output has not been achieved yet, but potentially it's going to be achieved. So this basically means that there's an increase in capacity of the economy to produce more goods and services. So things like investing in technology, investing in more capital, okay, anything that will help reap okay, a greater potential output will cause a largely... Uh, uh, will, cause a, will likely cause a rise in your potential growth. So it's known as your long-run economic growth. It results in an outward shift of the PPC. So just now what we did for actual growth is that we're always um, changing up resources, okay, such that in, in, in the short run, um, it moves from a point to another point. Okay, in this case, we're looking at an entire shift of PPC. Okay, so it's also a parallel shift of the long run AS. I will draw it out later on. So this is due to a growth in quantity, improvement in quality of factors of production, or an improvement in state of technology. So any of these factors that I've gone through before in your AS video um, will cause a shift in a parallel shift in your long run AS, which actually denotes um, a rise in national output, but it's actually going to be a potential output. So uh, go check it out in, in, in my AS video, right? I've already gone through it, but essentially this is when um, there's a rise in your productive capacity, which shows... Um, that basically your your economy is achieving your potential growth. So it results in an increase in productive capacity that like I've mentioned. So this is a blank diagram. Amazing, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to draw it out over here. Okay, I've got my y-axis, which don't forget, is always going to be GPL for micro econs, your general price level. My x-axis, which is basically going to be just my real GDP. All right, so we're just going to draw a case K, um initially okay when the economy is, has has got only one ad curve and one as curve right so it looks something like this okay so it's a bit shaky eh? um can't help it apple pencil all right so this is the as curve for instance okay and if i'm gonna draw a demand uh, a aggregate demand curve okay it just looks something like let's say um something like this Okay, I say it's my AD curve. So I've got AD, a, AD over here, as well as my AS curve. So when there's an increase okay, in your productive capacity, okay, this is the original output, Y1. In the original price level here, P1. Okay, when there's a rise in productive capacity, let's say due to improvements in technology, okay, um, a rise in productive capacity will lead to a rise in your potential growth. So this will cause, um, every time you've got a rise in your long run AS, uh, you would have a parallel shift outwards. So it looks something like this, for example. Okay, so AS1, now this is AS2. Let me just get rid of this so that move it in a little bit so this AS1 AS2 okay this is what happens when there is a rise let's say improvements in technology which causes a rise in productive capacity so you notice that your new output will actually come here Y2 um, where it intersects the original AD curve and your price has actually fallen so this is actually a good thing right it means that there is um, low and stable inflation right, i know a lot of you guys may not understand what inflation is don't worry i'll go through it soon but basically essentially what this means is that when there's a fall in price level in the long run it means that the economy is achieving a low and stable rate of inflation because the price level is unrising um, in fact they are dropping in state which is a good thing um, as long as it's not too much and there's also a rise in your national output okay from y1 to y2 which is definitely beneficial as well so y1 to y2 over here means that there's a rise in your long run national output okay and this is denoted by um your as curve which is shifting parallel outwards uh which is a good thing okay means that there's a rise in productive capacity your econ economy is going to face long run economic growth aka your potential growth all right so that was how the diagram looked like okay we move on now to sustainable growth sustainable growth doesn't have any diagrams it is basically just explaining so sustainable growth, okay, it basically indicates a rate of growth that can be maintained without creating other significant economic problems or either environmental issues or social issues. Okay, for example, depleted resources, environmental problems, especially for future generations, right? We're always looking at future generations because we're trying to focus on 
sustainable growth, right? So sustainable has to go in the long run. It has to essentially be like a system that is self-sustainable, okay? It's self-reliant. Um, it can regenerate its own resources and it doesn't have to rely on any external sort of um, forces to come in and, and change anything. So sustainable growth, so it's a sustained growth. I can't even speak anymore. Um, okay, you can either call it sustained or sustainable. Okay, I would say go with um, sustainable growth. Okay, sustained means that you're just kind of like lasting or like um, elongating economic growth, if you get what I mean, because it's just sustained, it's not sustainable. So sustainable growth is the beneficial one. Okay, um, it can be achieved by a steady increase in AD and, and long run AS in the long run. That would be how your growth continues to increase. Okay, as both of them slowly move out, move out, move out, they will actually help in causing sustainable growth or sustained growth to actually um, come into play. Okay, just to clarify, sustained growth basically means that um, economic growth, which is sustained over a long time, okay, regardless of your um, environment okay, that doesn't care about the impacts on the environment. Sustainable growth is basically sustained growth, which is long-run economic growth, um, coupled with ensuring that environmental social needs are also being met at the same time. Okay, the last one, of course, is going to be very simple. Inclusive growth. Okay, we're looking at um, a rate of growth that is sustained over a period of time, but is brought based across sectors, all economic sectors, and creates productive employment opportunities for a majority of the country's population. So this is a good thing also. So you want to go for sustainable and inclusive growth. Reason being is that inclusive growth ensures that everyone has a job, everyone has the basic living standards being met as well. Okay, so this takes into account income inequality, the richer class as well as the lower um, lower paying minorities or lower paying classes um, ensures that everyone has got a fair income, is equitable, okay, and ensures that um, everyone has basic living standards being met. Okay, that wraps up our video actually. Okay, so we're going to be just looking at exam requirements now. Um, you want to be able to recognize the differences in the different types of economic growth. I've already explained very clearly what the four different growths are. So in the long run, we always aim for sustainable growth and e inclusive growth. Okay, but if you look at them individually and you look at the mechanisms and how AD and AS works, you look at potential and actual growth. So explain how actual and potential growth also affects these AS and AD curves. And lastly, explain the consequences of slow economic growth as well as the causes of economic growth. Okay, The causes like I've already mentioned in this video quite briefly is basically your different factors of AD as well as your AS factors. So in the next part, I may go through a bit of causes first. Just to recap, I may not. Okay, we'll see. Um, but largely, it'll be on consequences of economic growth. Alright, so that'll be the next part. Okay, you just need to couple it with this first part and you'll be able to answer basically any question with regards to economic growth. Alright, so yes, that's all for this video, I believe. Um, if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comment section below. I will answer them as soon as possible. If not, do leave a like, okay, as well as to subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really does help me out a lot as well. And share this video with your friends if you think that it may help them in any way possible. Understand that macro is not very, very simple for some of you guys, so not to worry. We'll take it one step at a time and ensure that it gets simpler and simpler for you guys, alright? So if not, I will see you guys in the next part on part 8b when we're looking at consequences of economic growth. See you guys then. Bye-bye.